Everybody, this is Madeline Sale, the chapter goddess, and I have with me this morning the amazing author. Bruno Martins Schwartz. <laughs> which I am having him introduce himself because I do not want to butcher his name. I am terrible with <laughs> like accents. So you guys bear with me. We are going to be talking about his it's work. Funny Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruno is going to be sharing a little bit about himself. Um, so Bruno, go ahead and give our viewers a little bit about you. Sure. Um, I live and work in Lisbon, Portugal. Um, I've been writing since uh, I was 12 years old. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of everything. I've done everything. I have one of those crazy, crazy uh, uh, writer CVs. I, I, um, I sold houses. I worked in auctions. I, I was a consultant for HR and marketing. And I, uh, I don't know, I was a journalist. Uh, script writer, playwright, whatever. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I've done a lot of things, but I've kept writing all these years. Uh, so when I was, uh, I think, 23 or 24, I, I submitted my work to, to uh, one of the, the largest national contests in Portugal, which is the, the, the Young Creators uh, uh, National Award. And I uh, First time in 94, I, I won uh, uh, an honorable mention. And then uh, two years later, I won the contest. And uh, and that's how my writing career actually began. <laughs> began. And um, then, I, then I started doing other things. I, I went to work in, in movies. Uh, and um, only a lot later did I did I came back to writing novels. I have I have I don't know three or four, maybe four novels that are on the obliv what I call the oblivion drawer, never to come out. <laughs> but then I I, I wrote uh, this one here, Alex, uh, the, the saga of Alex Nine, which is still not uh, translated to English actually. Um, and it was a it was a, a success, but a, a small success because Portugal is a very small market. Uh, and then uh, eventually, I turned to the, the English market. Um, I, I learned English a long time ago since I was little, uh, and uh, my my uh, my um, spoken English is not as as fluent and uh, as as easy as it once were. But I think I, I, I still can do a good job in, in, in writing. Uh, so I started writing in English and, and, uh, and uh, going to global markets. I started writing in English and then translating to Portuguese and <laughs> doing the other way around, actually. Um, so I, I wrote uh, the Dark Sea War Chronicles, which, which are basically a, um, a trilogy, uh, a sci fi trilogy about uh, it's something like the the World War II's uh, Battle of the Atlantic, but in space. Sweet. And, um, and uh, then I, I started writing the, the Lore and the Shadow King miniseries, a two-part miniseries. That's, that's, that's the second volume is going to come, come out in, in the fall. Um, I was aiming at November, but my, as, as, as my... Uh, as the book is going gonna, is gonna to be launched as well in Portuguese at the same time. My and I, I publish traditionally in Portugal. My 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 editor, my publisher wants to wants to launch it at, at an event in October. So I was figuring November is probably going to be October. October. So uh, that's uh, and now I'm writing something completely different, which is a, a psychological thriller, and that, that's basically my <laughs> my path. That is awesome. You've been busy. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about Lore and the Shadow King. I have that down on my Kindle to read. I haven't got to it yet, but it sounds like it's going to be an awesome read. Oh, cool. Well, listen, I, 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 I took a risk with Lore and the Shadow King because I gave it a, a real fantasy title, but it's not really a fantasy, a fantasy uh, book. It's it's a post-apocalyptic book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's about uh, this little girl called Laura. She's about six years old, uh, and she's uh, she's um, 
running away from uh, an invading uh, a Russian army. This happens in a post-apocalyptic world where a couple of pandemics uh, uh, just just decimated the world and started making people um, psychotic and looking a little bit like uh, chimpanzee zombies or something cool. like that. Uh, and and so uh, it's kind of a zombie-like uh, world. Um, and the Russians invaded Europe, and they're basically already in Spain. And and uh, Laura is is uh, running away from them because um, uh, unknown to us, but known to the Russians, she has uh, special powers which can help in this post-apocalyptic world. On the other side of the story is the Shadow King. Uh, Shadow King is not a, a, a strange, super-powered guy. It's actually the opposite. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's Lieutenant Lieutenant JJ Berger, who is the leader of of the Shadow Team, a special forces uh, um, a team that uh, that works for the Western civilization and uh, works in Portugal and Spain. He's he's uh, he's very. Um, uh, He's very. He's an expert in in communications, in in talking with the with the people. He he has a, a Portuguese mother, so he speaks Portuguese and Spanish, uh, because you you should not confuse the Spanish people with the Portuguese people, because either of them is going to take offense. We 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 have been rivals for for hundreds of years. However. <laughs> Spanish and Portuguese language are very similar, and and uh, and if you speak one, you have a, a, a very good advantage speaking the other as well. Uh, so um, JJ Berger and his shadow team is, are going are going to the southern southern Portugal for a mission, and they're going to cross paths with little Laura, and it's and uh, and that's all I'm going to say for now. <laughs> Yes, definitely don't give it too much away because it sounds it sounds like you're close to it. And I am super <laughs> stoked to read it. Okay. I love the That's cover it. too. It's the little girl with a army guy with a gun behind it. That Thank looks you. intimidating, but not too intimidating that it would have like encouraged have, me not to read it. I have a super, super uh, cover designer, an Austrian girl called uh -huh. Wes. And she, I've been working with her for about three years, and I don't want anybody else, um, at least for for the the, the the covers I control, because in Portugal it's not it's not my decision. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but uh, she's been doing wonderful work with my covers, and uh, and I asked I, actually that was the first cover she she um, uh, she proposed to me a, a couple of years ago. And I said, no, I asked, no, it has to be a little bit darker and grittier. And she made a, a grayer version of it, but I wanted to refresh it now. And, uh, and I, I showed it to, 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 to my girlfriend and she said, listen, this first one is much better than the second <laughs> one. <laughs> Why don't you use that one? So I did, I, I, I asked Les to, to, to design a, a, um, another one for the second volume. And I wanted to to be um, to be connected one to the other, and so she used the little girl, and then I think I think it's I, think I love it as well. It looks really good. It's very suspenseful. Thank you. Like it makes me wonder, like what is going to happen? Like is she yeah. be is she afraid of him, or what's going on in her world? Um, right. You mentioned when you started writing earlier. What yeah. inspires you to write? Well, when I started writing, I, I simply didn't have enough books to read, <laughs> or the ones I had, I didn't like so much. So I started imagining my own stories, and uh, and after a while, I started I started and seeing that I was losing my stories, I was forgetting them, so I needed to write them, and then the hard part begun because when I see when you start putting the words in the, the blank page uh, you you start figuring no that's really much worse than what I am <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's the beginning of the story because it took me years and years to, to perfect my writing uh, at least to a, to a good enough standard you have to start with short stories I started with a, a Two or three different uh, adventure and spy novels, 
but they 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 didn't last more than twenty or thirty pages because it did at, at one point it, they didn't make sense. So I started writing short stories one after the other, always different, always with a different style, just to train myself, just to find to find out how to work a story, how how to create a, a character, how to to make it uh, alive, basically. And this took me years. Uh, when I was, I don't know, 18, 19, maybe, maybe 20 years old, that was the time I started writing novellas. Because I started thinking, okay, uh, now I know how to do a story, how to, to, to construct it, how to build it. But, um, but the characters in a lot, they're very fast. They disappear very fast. So I want I want some space to develop a character to to make to make a character go through some things. So I started writing novellas, and that's when I started submitting my work and started earning a few a few awards. Uh, and finally, I went into novels. But novels, I I, I usually say, um, and I, maybe you need a beep <laughs> on top of this, but. I usually say a novel is like a pile of, of manure, you know, <laughs> a pile of shit. You know, you put your hands into it and it's and it's uh, dirty and it's lousy and it's and then it's it's very difficult to actually control a novel. Um, so uh, my first ones were were horrible and uh, forgot about them and then then I hope that nobody else will ever read them. <laughs> we all start somewhere though. So yeah, that's a good exactly. starting point. You're getting words down, you're getting it out there and you're, you're trying, you're not just like, Oh no, I can't do this and give up. You're still, you're still moving forward. So that's good. And then, good. And then something amazing happened, which is I, I, I was invited to start um, writing movies. <laughs> and, and when I started doing that, a whole new world just opened up. <laughs> It's it. One one interesting thing is um, I don't have any formal training in in um, in writing. My training is in in uh, in law and in business basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, my writing was was self taught basically, and I and I read a, a couple of books on 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 creative writing, and I just thought them useless, completely useless. They didn't tell you anything that you don't, didn't know already, you know. Any any little girl, uh, any little boy knows how to make a story. Like they know how to imagine a, a character or a scenario. It's not that that's difficult. <laughs> the yeah. difficult uh, is other things, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I started making movies, I started reading uh, screenwriting uh, about screenwriting and script writing and TV move, TV writing and. Everything. And they're so much better. Those books are, are much, much better for, for anyone who was trying to write. Yeah. And I started understanding structure and how to lay out a scene and how to introduce characters and all those, and how to manage conflict. All those things people in movies know a lot more about than people in books. And uh, that meant that I have a few years learning about it, but but uh, but it meant a, a whole new world to 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 learn. And after a few years uh, doing this, and, and I only produce, I only have one script, one long feature produced uh, anyway, which was a which was a um, a nightmare, <laughs> but a, yeah, but a nice nightmare because I, I would have traded for the world, but it was a nightmare. Um, understanding what worked and what didn't work, uh, because because movie business is relentless. If you have something that's not working, you're gonna get hit. Yes. You're gonna get hit badly. Um, so uh, it was a really good school, and then I, I started thinking, why don't I go back to books? Something where it's all it's all it's all up to me, you know, and. Um, and that's when I started writing uh, Alex Nine. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I have been imagining it for twenty years, I think, before starting writing. Um, that's not 
that's more or less how I do things. I start thinking about, I, I must have right now about a dozen novels in my head, which I'm working constantly, but I'm only, I will only write about one at a time, maybe two at a time if, if at some point, but, but I'm always imagining and developing about a dozen. So they take years before they start going into the page. Um, but uh, I wrote the first. I wrote the first uh, volume of, of Alex Nine. I gave it to a publisher who had just published a short story of mine. Mm -hmm. He loved it. The first submission I got, I got published. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Thing. And and then I published the second volume. And then he 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 decided, why don't we republish the first and the second volume along with the third volume in an, an omnibus book? And we'll publish it in, in our main series, which is you don't know you don't know it, but in Portugal the Bang series, which is the, the series where uh, Alex Stein is, mm -hmm. is just the best fantasy sci-fi series in, 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 the, in the market. I'm talking I'm talking being published alongside George R. R. Martin. I'm talking being published alongside Joe Abercrombie. And Glenn wow. Cook and Brandon Sanderson. You see what I mean? Yeah, that's so amazing. It was, yeah, it was amazing. And um, but but as I said, it, it, it's it's good success for, for Portugal, but still not enough for a career, not enough for me to be exclusively work, working in in my writing. So I I started working for the international market and. Uh, little by little, it's coming together, uh, and it's it's a long learning curve, but it's it's uh, I think it's going better and better. That is great. So back on Lord and the Shadow King, you mentioned book two, I think, is coming out later this year. Yeah, this year. book two. It's it's a it's a two part mini series basically. Um, maybe I'll, I'll write more about Laura and, and JJ Berger uh, um, in the future. But, but for now, they're, they're going to be just two books. And uh, the second one closes this part of the story. And it, it's, it's, uh, the, they have strange names because that was the risk and, and that I wanted to take. The first one is called The Pink Glove. And the second one is called Peach. Uh, and uh, um, it, sh it should be coming, I mean, uh, Coming up in the fall, you can already buy uh, the first volume uh, at Amazon, and uh, and uh, I'm very excited about uh, about this new one. That is exciting. So go ahead and tell our viewers where they can find you on social media. Sure, um, I, you can find my uh, my uh, website is 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 easy <laughs> as long as you can spell my name, <laughs> which is brunomartinschwarz.com. <laughs> Okay, um, and you can find me in Facebook as well. I have a B Martin Schwarz page, but but you just put my name and and you you get there. And I mean Goodreads, obviously, uh, as well, and at Amazon as well. Just put my name in, uh, and um, and Instagram, whatever. I just I'm just not on Twitter. I still I'm just I, I, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a, a, a Gen Xer, so <laughs> social media is overwhelming at times. So I'm, I, it's, it's a lot. So, yes. um, do you have anything you want to share with our viewers before we end today? Well, I, I would love to, 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 um, I would love to have you try my books. Uh, the first volume of the Dark Sea War Chronicles: Fighting the Silent is is free at Amazon as well. If you want, to just uh, check it out and see how, how I write. Um, and I'm and I'm right now. I believe I'm I'm uh, writing some of my best work, which is uh, uh, the, the the new inter psychological thriller called Insight, which should come out in in the, the spring of of next year. Um, and uh, right now, I'm starting to to work exclusively in, in on my writing, which means that that my books are coming out faster and faster. Um, I have a new newsletter that, that uh, you should look uh, look in, in my site and, and, and see how it's called the BMS Vault, and you can please subscribe it because I'm going to have 
a lot of exclusive content on it. And um, and I also like short stories, and uh, there, there are some coming up as well. Um, well, come and join me. This this is a this is a great a great adventure. <laughs> it sounds like it. I can't wait to read the book. Well, Bruno, it has been a pleasure having you on today. Thank you guys My so pleasure. much for viewing this, and have a good day. Thank you.